Hi, I'm Chris Hess, Manager of Engineering at Harrington Hoist. Welcome to another episode of Lessons on Lifting. Hi, Greg Butler here again from Harrington Product Support. Today's lesson on lifting is going to be on TCR air motor overhaul. Okay, so there's three basic steps to disassemble the hoist, and we will start by removing the valve body, then we'll remove the air motor, and after we have the air motor off, then we'll disassemble the air motor. So to begin with, first step, we'll take the valve body off. Okay, so we remove the valve body, we'll set that out of the way. The valve body and air motor gasket is reusable if you don't tear it, so, you know, this one's in pretty good shape. We'll just set it over here out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. Next step is going to be to remove the three bolts that hold the air motor to the hoist body. After we remove the bolts from the air motor, we'll lift the whole assembly off, and sometimes you may have to tap it a little bit with a soft hammer. The air motor loose. We're going to lift it up straight up. The brake tube runs through the center of the air motor and it is imperative that we don't bend the brake tube. Take the brake tube and place it safely out of the way. Flip the air motor over and we're ready to start air motor disassembly. Okay, to start with, we have to remove this snap ring that retains the front plate to the rotor. Be very careful that you don't overextend the snap ring and stretch it, damage it. Place that out of the way. The next step is going to be to separate the rear plate and rotor from the front plate. And when we do this, the veins are going to come out. There we got the air motor is basically disassembled. Now that we have our veins and springs disassembled, we'll set them over here on a rag for later use. A uh, couple of things to look for. You want to look for any signs of scoring or overheating inside the stator. This one's in pretty good shape. I do have uh, some examples here that we can take a look at of uh, some serious overheating inside of the stator. I have an uh, example of a vein. One of the things we want to look at sometimes if a hoist is run with no lubrication at all for long periods of time. Uh, the veins can overheat and crack. Uh, so here's an example of a cracked vein. You can see there the corner chipped off of it. These are the kind of things if, if you have a hoist that doesn't want to run at full speed or sometimes will run one direction not the other, you, you may want to take a look at the veins. Um, if you want to measure your veins, this card criteria on the veins is uh, going to be 25 millimeters. This one here is 26.67 millimeters, so we're in good shape. Okay. We want to inspect the bearing in the rear plate, make sure it's smooth. Uh, I just happen to have a bad one here, so everybody can take a listen. If you hear that, makes a whirring noise. You need to replace the rear bearing, okay? Inspect the bearing in the front plate. That's smooth. No roughness in there, no play in there. Um, occasionally people call and they'll say, uh, well, what if I have deep scratches? If there are minor scratches in the stator, you can hone that. That's not a, it's not a problem. Uh, scratches on the rotor, there's very few instances where you're actually going to need a rotor for replacement. If you run unclean air through here, or unfiltered air, you can get some scratches on the ends of the rotor. Those can be filed off, sanded off, whatever. It's really not that critical. Uh, and likewise with anything on the face. The face of the rotor never really touches anything other than the spring. So as long as the veins and the springs slide in and out of the grooves in the rotor, it, you're in good shape. So the purpose of this lesson on lifting was to provide you with information so that you can assemble the air motor correctly and not have any problems during assembly. 
Uh, in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and strip this thing all the way down, completely take it apart and put it back together so that you can see all the steps that are necessary to do it properly. First thing we'll do is we have to remove this rear bearing retainer. This is where, the brake, where we took the brake tube out of earlier. Okay, the brake tube sits down in there like that. This thing only has an O-ring that holds it in there. Be very careful with it. It is soft aluminum. I like to use a little pick and just get underneath of it and work it around. Boom. Now we have the rear ba bearing retainer out. We'll take this assembly over. We'll put it in the press. We'll press the rotor out. We'll use a puller to pull the rear bearing out. And then we'll put it all back together properly. Okay, now we have everything completely disassembled. We'll go ahead and put it all back together so we can see how to do it right. We'll start by packing the replacement uh, bearing for in the rear plate with a good quality number two grease. Now that we have the bearing packed with grease, we'll go ahead and take the bearing in the rear plate and the rotor back over to the press. We'll press the bearing into the housing then we'll press the rear plate and the bearing onto the rotor shaft until we get our 2000s clearance between the rear plate and the surface of the rotor. Then we'll be ready to put the whole thing back together. Okay, when we press the rear bearing into the rear plate, we want to make sure we only press on the outer race of the bearing, not on the inner race, because we don't want to damage a new bearing. So we'll set the bearing in the Rear plate on the press. We're going to set our rotor on the press and we're going to press the bearing and rear plate onto the rotor. Again, we'll use our little special adapter there. We'll get it started. The clearance is two thousandths of an inch between the rear plate and the rotor. So we'll stick a two thousandths feeler gauge in here and we'll just go ahead and press it down until we're against the feeler gauge. Just double check, make sure we have about two thousandths all the way around. Feels good to me. You should not hear the rotor hitting the rear plate when you spin it. Sounds like we're good. We're ready to go ahead and put the air motor back together and assemble the hoist. Okay. Now that we have our rotor assembled to the rear plate, we'll go ahead and we'll put our rear bearing retainer in. That just pops into place very nicely. Set the rear plate on the table. Take our alignment pin. Put the alignment pin into the rear plate. Set our stator housing on there. Remember the shallow indentation on the stator housing is the one that uh, goes toward the rear plate. Good. That's on there. When we do that, we want to pull up on the surface of the rotor and make sure that the, the rotor is not sticking over the lip on the stator housing. Okay, we're in good shape here. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our veins in. When we install the veins, it is absolutely critical to make sure that the legs on the springs stay parallel with each other. Okay, we don't want to get them crossed because if they're crossed, they'll, they'll rub on each other and they'll, they'll break in 
you know, no time at all. So make sure that the springs stay parallel. Go ahead and pop the veins into our stator. Now that the veins are in, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of air toil in there to make sure that the veins are lubricated at least for a while. We'll go ahead and we'll set the front plate onto the stator housing. Put the snap ring on. Again, don't stretch the snap ring. And we're ready to assemble the air motor onto the hoist. I like to slide the alignment pin up just a little bit so I can sort of catch it with my finger and not but not lose it because we're going to have to set the air motor on and get the shaft and the air motor lined up with the coupler between the air motor and the gear train and then get our alignment pin lined up with the uh, hole in the wheel housing. Air motor sitting on there. Go ahead and put the bolts in. And we'll run them down with the T-handle. Now we'll torque them to 22 foot-pounds. Okay, air motor's torqued, a little bit of air tool oil, put on the end of the brake tube so we don't damage the seal and the brake piston on the other end. Install the brake tube. We're going to reuse our gasket because it was not damaged. Set that on the alignment pins. Install the valve body. Make sure it's on the alignment pins. We'll install the bolts in the valve body. These bolts get torqued to 78 inch pounds, not foot pounds, they're not very big bolts. Okay, 78 inch pounds. Just run them down with the T handle and get them snug. Stick our torque wrench on here. Go to 78 inch pounds. There you have it. The air motor's installed. We basically completed a, an overhaul. The next step in the repair would be obviously to uh, apply air to the hoist. Make sure it works up, down, do a complete operational test on it after that's finished. Since we did have it apart, we would want to do a 125% load test just to verify that uh, everything is good and the hoist is fit to use in the field. So that's all for our TCR air motor overhaul lesson on lifting. If you have any questions now or in the future, feel free to call Harrington Product Support, 1-800-233-3010. Thank you. That concludes another episode of Lessons on Lifting. Thank you for joining the revolution.